In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate how to use short rows to shape shoulders simultaneously as for the back of a sweater. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, you can use the chapter links in the video timeline. I have three swatches here that are very similar. They have some slight differences and I'll show each of them up close. But what they're simulating are, is shoulder shaping for a sweater that was knit bottom up. So what we have down here is the typical stair step uh, bind off where you might be instructed to bind off a certain number of stitches at the beginning of every row for say six rows and, and you can get the left shoulder over here and um, so you're working both shoulders gradually binding them off and then when you're done with the shoulders then you bind off the neck so that creates these stair steps and it that kind of can be seamed but it's kind of uh, kind of tricky to do to do well so this simulation right here is the same shaping only using short rows rather than binding off every row short rows were used to create uh, the longer rows here and, and maintain, maintain these shorter and then they were all bound off at the same time so you have a nice sloped single a, a row of bind off stitches that makes seaming a lot easier. But again, after this shoulder is, was bound off, then this shoulder was bound off, and then the neck was bound off. So the neck is always bound off at the end. There's a third way to do it, which is to do the short row shaping, but rather than binding off all of these stitches, you keep them live. So you, you do all the shoulder shaping for this shoulder and for the shoulder over here. And when you're done with that, then you bind off the neck stitches. And by having live stitches uh, left on the needles, what that allows you to do is to join uh, those live stitches with the live stitches of the corresponding front shoulder using a three needle bind off, which allows you to bind off and seam at the same time. It's a really a nice way to finish and it's not as bulky as binding off and then seaming. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to convert your pattern instructions, which tell you to do stair step shaping, how to do it as short row shaping, whether you decide Side you want to bind off and then seam or you want to use a three needle bind off. So when I plan out how I'm going to work the short rows so that I understand what to do and when to do it, I first thing I do is I kind of chart out how the stair step shoulder shaping would have been done. You don't have to do anything as fancy as this. It's just so that you can see that this is the same shape. What is important is the number of stitches that are supposed to be bound off each time so that you know what that is. And you also know uh, when you're supposed to start it. I'm showing here that the bind offs would have begun on row 10. When you are doing short row shaping, you're going to work the first short row on row nine. So you need to do all of your setup. We're gonna place markers so that you know where these different uh, div divisions are between the stitches. You're going to do that before you work row nine. So if you were supposed to start um, bind offs on a right side row, before you work that wrong side row that comes before it, you're going to place markers. So you can do this in a simplified way. I have seven stitches that are supposed to be bound off um, at each uh, shoulder. So you could just draw a line and kind of plan out what your um, bind offs are supposed to be, whatever the numbers are for your uh, sweater. Um, you write down what those numbers are and the markers are going to get placed between each of those. You're going to use uh, w one color for almost all of them. Um, you're going to use a different color um, at the place where the shoulder meets the neck. So mine are each seven stitches, two, four, six, seven. I'm going to put a marker here. So this shoulder, I have the three spans of stitches that should have been bound off and the last one is marked with a green marker. 
So I have the, the markers all placed on both shoulders and now I'm ready to, to purl across my row nine. So remember on the stair step, I was supposed to bind off on row 10, the seven stitches. Instead on row nine, I'm going to stop when I get to that marker. So I'm gonna stop when I have seven stitches remaining. Okay, so I'm approaching the first marker. When I get there, I can just take the marker off and put it to the side. This is the point where I'm going to turn the work and go in the other direction. So I'm gonna turn and go back this way until I get to the last marker on the other shoulder. So this is also the place where I need to work a short row technique. So you can use any technique you like. You will be doing it at this location regardless of what technique. If you like wrap and turn short rows, that means you will wrap this stitch over here that hasn't yet been worked. If you like German short rows, then you will turn the work and you will create your double stitch. So in my case, I have the yarn in front, I slip the stitch and I pull the working yarn over to create my double stitch. So I turn at the same location, regardless of the short row technique that I'm using. So once again, I am approaching the very last marker on the needle. I remove that marker and I do my short row uh, technique, whichever type I I need. And the reason why it doesn't matter what kind of short row technique you're using is because the turning point is between the stitches. It's after you've worked this stitch and it's before you work that stitch. A short row technique is applied to this turning point in order to prevent a hole and in order to keep the stockinette looking smooth. So the fact that a wrap would occur over here versus a double stitch of a German short row would appear over here is irrelevant. This is sort of like a river right here, this turning point, and these are like the river banks. And what a wrap in a wrap and turn is, is a flag that says, here's where you turned last time, the turn was right in front of this wrap. Whereas a German short row, the, the flag is the double stitch that's right before where you turned the last time. So the important thing is to locate the correct turning point, not to try to always place the flag on the same bank of the river. So once again, I'm going to turn and I like to use German short rows. So that means I have the yarn in front always. Uh, I slip the stitch as if to purl and I pull the yarn over the top until I've created um, a double stitch. You can see the two, the two legs are pulled over and I've got this double stitch. And now I work across again until I get to the very last marker. So once again, I'm approaching the marker. When I get to the marker, I take it off and now I apply my short row technique. So for me, that means uh, turning the work, making sure the yarn is in front, slipping the stitch and pulling it over to, to create this double stitch. And now I'm going to knit back to the other orange, the last marker. So now I'm at my last orange marker. I'm going to take this off. I have only the neck markers left right now. Um, so when you have done your last short row turn, you're going to turn and you're going to work across all the way to the end of the row over here. So I'm approaching the first place where I had turned. And so you can see that I have that double stitch. So I'm gonna work my double stitch as just a single stitch like I would anytime I was working German short rows. Uh, you might uh, have a wrap for a wrap and turn. So you would work that instead or yarn over or shadow wrap, whatever your technique is. When you get to that location, work it the way it is supposed to be worked for your short row method of choice. So I've come, come to my second double stitch. So I'm gonna work that basically like it's a, a purl two together, work it as one stitch, and then I work to the end. So what you can see I have is this sloped 
uh, edge right here this that comes down like this so now we have uh, two choices one is that we can bind off this shoulder or we can just work across those shoulders and keep those stitches live. So I'm going to demonstrate both methods. I'm going to show you uh, how you would handle binding off the shoulder if that's what you would like to do. So if you wanted that uh, smooth diagonal line like I showed you in this swatch, we can do that. Um, otherwise, you can keep the stitches live on here and then you can join them to the shoulder of the front, uh, which are also live using a three needle bind off. So I'm gonna show you how to bind these off like a regular bind off, because there is a little trick to it, um, and then how to finish the other shoulder as well first, and then I'll show you how to do it if you wanted to do a three needle bind off instead. So we're going to bind off the stitches until we get to this marker. Okay, I am at the marker now. And so I'm gonna remove the marker and I'm going to work the first stitch of the neck. So this is a neck stitch right here. I'm going to work that stitch and I need to do that in order to bind off the last shoulder stitch. So now I can pull that one over and now all of the shoulder stitches have been bound off and I have the first of the neck, st neck stitches that have been worked. So now I'm going to work across all of these stitches. I'm going to maintain this marker, so I still want to keep this marker here. And again, when I get, come to where I encounter the short row turn technique, I'm going to work it the way it's supposed to be worked. This is a double stitch. It gets worked like a knit two together. Another double stitch. Work that like a knit two together. So now I have uh, worked this, finished working this slope here. Now I'm going to bind off all of these stitches. So I am approaching the marker that shows uh, where the neck begins. And I still need to bind off this final stitch. So I let the marker come off. I work the first neck stitch in order to bind off the last shoulder stitch and then I work across all of the neck stitches. So now I have um, the two shoulders are bound off and now I can bind off for the neck. So now I'm going to show you how to finish this off so that you can then join each shoulder to its corresponding uh, shoulder on the front. So what we're going to do now is we're going to keep the shoulder stitches live. So we're going to work across the entire row. And when we get to uh, this section of the row, we're going to be working our short row techniques like the double stitch or the wrap and turn, whatever. We're going to be uh, working those uh, as we get across this shoulder. But otherwise, we're just working across the entire sweater back. So I've completed this row. And so now we're going to knit across all of, or purl across all of these uh, stitches of the shoulder plus the neck stitches. We're gonna stop when we get to this marker. So I've gotten to the um, marker that marks the end of the neck. I take that marker off. I turn the work and I bind off all of the stitches of the neck I, and I stop when I get to this marker. So we've reached the end of the neck. We remove the marker uh, and we break the yarn. And this last stitch that's on the needle, we just let it get bigger and bigger until the tail comes out of it. And that's what finishes off the neck. So now we have live stitches on each of these two shoulders. And now we can do a three needle bind off uh, with the matching front. So if I wanted to join the left shoulder of the back, which is what this is, with the left shoulder of the, um, of the front, I want to look at the piece where the two, the wrong sides can face each other and the long edge is going to also 
be at the neck um, side. So we've got the short sides down here and uh, the long side over here. There are two ways of doing a three needle bind off. One is so that the wrong sides are facing each other and the bind off chain lies on the right side of the work and creates a decorative appearance, but it's more typical to have the right sides facing each other when you begin the bind off. And so that the bind off chain is on the inside and then you just get a bit of a seam ditch on the right side of the work. So I happen to have some yarn still attached uh, to this shoulder right here. So I'll just get started. I do have videos on the three needle bind off uh, that I'll link to at the top of the screen here. So you enter each stitch as if to knit the first stitch of each needle. You wrap the yarn like a knit stitch. You pull it through each one and then let them um, off the needle. So I've got one stitch on the right hand needle. Now I do that again. I go through uh, each stitch so and then I knit it. You can pull it through, let that one off and then pull it through this one and let that one off. Now I've got two stitches on the right hand needle. So now I can bind off that first one. So you're joining the two stitches together and then gradually you're binding them off as you accumulate stitches on the right hand needle. So you can see that when the th uh, three needle bind off is finished, you get that little seam ditch here. You have that sloped shoulder shaping that you are looking for. If you're interested in exploring more videos on short rows or the three needle bind off, check out the playlists over here. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.